episode of the spread <laughs> this is your guest host big easy with our senior baseball analyst jay dash jim cannot make it to the studio today he's got some work to do uh he loves baseball don't let him don't let him fool don't you. let him fool you he loves it but uh you can always hit him up and uh at on, bet jim the win at bet the jim the win on twitter or you could hit all of us up at bet underscore the spread for all that baseball insight, sports knowledge, anything you want. We're going to keep it rolling here with the AL West. We already talked the uh, Oakland Athletics. And uh, what does it look like here? The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Please believe it. How about it? Longest name in sports history. Pool holes. Yeah, pool that's, holes. All I, that's all I know. And, well, Trout, obviously, but. Yeah, Pujols is actually questionable for opening day right now, but it does look like he can make it back. They're thinking maybe playing him at DH to start the season and maybe moving forward as well, maybe try to give this guy as much rest as possible, keep him healthy as long as possible because you paid this guy a ton of money, so you're going to want him to perform late into his career. So maybe DH is the best spot for him right now. But here's what they did this offseason. They signed outfielder Craig Gentry. He'll probably be a fourth outfielder for him. Maybe he turns into the third outfielder because they are missing a starter in the outfield, I believe. They signed infielder Cliff Pennington to a two-year deal. Why did they bring him in? They do have Johnny Giovatella at second base. He's He had a decent season last year. I think he hit 272 or something like that. So he's not terrible or anything, but he doesn't have huge upside. So if it, he's still a young guy. If he isn't able to keep things going, maybe Pennington's just the safety net in case, like I said, Gio Batella doesn't get the job done this season. Then they signed outfielder slash first baseman Daniel Nava right now. I mean, he could be the starting outfielder in left field there. It's either going to be him or Gentry, I would have to believe at this point. They've signed catcher Giovanni Soto. They, they lost Chris Iannetta this season in free agency, so they brought over Soto. Iannetta, he was a reliable veteran. Soto, I believe, is a reliable veteran, but they do have a young guy that I think they want to give a chance to, and Carlos Perez. We'll talk about him in a minute here. And one other signing, they signed relief pitcher L. Albuquerque. He played for the Detroit Tigers, and he had... He has pretty high upside. I mean, he strikes out a ton of people, but he also walks a little bit too many. I actually think the walks came down a little bit last season, though. But this guy does have some upside, and he may work his way to the back end of the bullpen. And they made two trades. They traded for the best fielding shortstop in baseball in Andrelton Simmons. They gave up shortstop Eric Ibar for him and left-handed pitcher Sean Newcomb, their top prospects. So they gave up a ton to bring in Simmons, which, I mean, you have to do because this guy is, like I said, he's pretty much Aussie Smith of today. And he has some upside. I mean, his first season in the bigs, he hit, I think, over 15 home runs, although he hasn't been able to really repeat it since. So they believe he has a ton of offensive upside as well, but he still has to meet that potential. But no matter what, I mean, you got one of the best shortstops in baseball defensively. So it's a win-win there. But like I said, we'll have to see what Ibar does for the Braves. He's always been a good shortstop. They'll probably trade him when they get the their first chance to. And Sean Newcomb, this is really why they made the deal. Sean Newcomb is a beast, and it looks like he's going to be, I mean, he has the potential to be an ace, but it, it looks like he's going to be a very good pitcher, if nothing else, in, in the big league. So Duke Newcomb. What, <laughs> yeah, Duke Newcomb. <laughs> but they made one other trade. They traded for third baseman Yunel Escobar, uh, again, a solid veteran, and I think that was a good trade for him. They gave up pitcher Trevor Gott, so I think they made a good deal here in bringing in a starter because they need offensive help this season, man. Some of the people they lost real quick, They, like I said, Chris Iannetta, the catcher, they lost the free agency. They lost Matt Joyce to free agency, Shane Victorino, and David Murphy, all to free agency. Three outfielders there, and starting pitcher Matt Latos, and relief pitcher Wesley Wright. Also, unsigned, David Freeze. It doesn't look they're, like they're going to resign him. Like I said, they brought in you know Escobar. I think that's an upgrade over David Freeze at this point in his career, but he still has yet to catch on with the team. But why I said they need... 
some bats. I mean, I look around here. Obviously, you got Mike Trout in center field. That's one of the best bats to have. What he hit, 41 home runs last season. He strikes out a lot, but he also takes a ton of walks and he keeps his average up. He hit 299 with a 402. The only question about him is, is he going to be able to steal more bases? He only had 11 stolen bases last season, or is it just the fact that keep this guy healthy, don't worry about stolen bases because he produces. I mean, he's one of the best, if not the best player in all of baseball. Believe that. There's no doubt about it. And then uh, the other guys in the outfield, Chris Calhoun in right field, he had the – I mean, he has good upside, but he had somewhat of a down year last year. Just hit just 256. I think they expect a little bit more out of him and a 308 on base. They want more than that, but he did have 26 home runs for him, so he, he still has value out there in right field. I don't know if he's going to be able to repeat the 26 home runs. I think he's a better hitter and not quite so much a power hitter. I, th- I think the home run numbers might come down in the average and the on base come up a little bit this season. And then Daniel Nova, Craig Gentry in left field right now. I don't know what they're going to do uh, out there. I think they need to bring in another outfielder to be satisfied with what they got in, in the infield. Like I said, they brought over you know Escobar. This guy's, I mean, he's not a young guy anymore or anything, but I definitely think they upgraded here over David Freeze, and he had a very good season last year. So I like what they did at third base. They they traded for Simmons at shortstop, so what you have on the left side of the infield looks pretty good. Like I said, Elber Pujols at first base, I mean, that's what they have listed here right now on their depth chart, but I, I don't know how much first base he's going to play this season. It might be C.J. Crone. Now, Crone, they want to see more out of him, too. He hit, he hit 262 with the 300 on base last year, 16 home runs. I think you can get more power and more average out of him, but he K's a little bit too much, doesn't take enough walks, so you might not. But, in, I mean, he's still a young guy. In the minors, he was a 300 hitter, so you, you may see more out of him. Maybe he is the future at first base for, maybe not. Maybe Daniel Nava plays some first base. We'll have to see. But... Johnny Giovatella at second base, like I mentioned, I'm not, not real high on this guy. He did, I mean, he was one of their better hitters in terms of average last year, a 272, but he, he doesn't walk very much, so his on-base percentage is low. He doesn't have much pop, doesn't have much speed, so, I mean, he can hit, but that's pretty much it. Now, he, I mean, he can play the field, don't get me wrong, but you want to see a little bit more offensively out of uh, second baseman, I believe. So they have some holes here in the offense. Right now, C.J. Crone's listed as their D.H., but like I said, Pujols might be that guy. might be Crone at first base. We'll have to see if Pujols is healthy, healthy to open a season. If not, I mean, they're going to have some serious holes to open a season offensively. Catcher, Carlos Perez, a guy that looked all right last season in his first taste of the big leagues. Hit 250, just a 299 on base. But, you know, catchers, I mean, you can't expect huge numbers out of him. He had a couple home runs. But, again, if it doesn't work out with Carlos Perez, you, you brought in the veteran in Giovanni Soto as you lost Ionetta. So you still, True have, veteran. you still have the safety net there as well. So I'm not big on this offense. I mean, you got one of the best in Mike Trout, and you may have one of the best in Elber Pujols. I think he's going to have a, a good season again. I mean, mid-200 batter, 260, something like that, but have the power, you know what I mean, the traditional Angels version of the Elber Pujols. He's not that 300 hitter anymore or anything. But those two guys right there, I mean, they give you something. And then there's the upside with Andrelton Simmons. Crone could step up as well. You know Escobar is a solid player, so there's a little bit out here. But I don't know, man. I'm not too big on this offense. And then I look at the rotation. you got Garrett Richards. It, is he an ace or is he just a number one? I'm not sure yet, but he's a very good pitcher and he deserves to be at the top of this rotation. Then you got C.J. Wilson. I don't think he deserves to be a number two. Jared Weaver doesn't deserve to be a number two. Maybe Andrew Haney. This is a guy, a, a young guy, was in the Florida system, came over here to the Angels, and he's pitching okay, m- maybe a little bit better than okay. He's a pretty good pitcher, so maybe he can step up and be that number two. And then maybe C.J. Wilson and Weaver doesn't look as bad as a three and four. Plus, there's Matt Schumacher as well. This guy can step up in, I mean, two years ago, he pitched like a number two, maybe even a low-end number one. But he didn't repeat that last season. So one A. He needs to step up and bounce back from last season. And maybe he could be the number three. And then the rotation doesn't look too bad. But outside of that, there's questions. I mean, you got Hector Santiago, you could uh place in this rotation as well at the back end. That's not terrible. Uh Nick Tropiano. He may be at the back end. I don't know. Tyler Skaggs, another young guy. I think he was in Arizona system at one time. Uh, I don't know how, how high of an upside he has anymore. They thought maybe 
two or three at one time. I don't think it's that high anymore. But again, I don't know about the rotation. It looks all right if Haney pitches good and if Schumacher has a, a bounce back season, then it looks all right because you could say CJ Wilson. I mean, this guy used to be a number one type pitcher. He's more of a number three or four to me nowadays. And Jared Weaver, we know how he's fallen off recently. So he's a back end guy to me. But you have a lot of options here. I just don't know how well it's going to work out unless the, these couple guys really step up and have the seasons that they need them to have, like Haney and Schumacher. And Richards, too. I mean, he had that big injury. He came back and pitched pretty well, but not quite like he did before he had that big injury. Well, we already broke down the Oakland A's rotation, and I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to go. I, like, I have more trust in uh, the Angels rotation over Oakland. Yeah, I think. Well, I like Sonny I mean, Gray over all these pitchers, but oh yeah, below but I'm that, not one I, guy, I have, one yeah. guy. Think, well, I guess one guy will make a difference if you get yeah. the wild card. But other than that, you well, need I mean, you always hold. need that ace. Yeah. But yeah, I think I agree. I think the Angels' rotation is a tiny bit better from top to bottom, and plus they have more options as well. You look at the bullpen. I'm not too satisfied with the bullpen either. You have Houston Street and Joe Smith at the back end. L. L. Burkirky, like I said, they brought in. I do like Cam Bedrosian, the guy I just talked about in the last segment. Like I said, him and R.J. Alvarez were on the same team in the minors, and actually Bedrosian was the better pitcher in the minors. But nowadays, I think R.J. Alvarez looks better. But I still think I'm still holding out hope Bedrosian can turn into that back end of the bullpen piece. I mean, this bullpen could be all right, but there there isn't. It's kind of weak depth wise, I would say. So I don't know, man. The Angels, I, they stayed in the race last year. I just I don't trust them. If it wasn't for Mike Trout, I wouldn't give him a freaking chance to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, right. But the, we talked about the worst defensive shortstop, and now we're talking about the best defensive shortstop. That's got to be uh, worth something. Well, that's why I put Oakland in MVP, fifth place, yeah, first of all. I know, but you got MVP and you got, you know, uh, gold glove shortstop. <laughs> Come yeah. on now. Yeah, I get it, man. Good I mean, old... there's pieces here. Like I said, man, they stay in it. When you have pool holes and trout, and if you have uh, a top end of the pitcher like Garrett Richards, you at least have a chance each season. I just think they could do a lot better. I mean, they, it's hard because you spend so much money on trout and pool holes alone. Yeah. That, I mean, you any team in any league, even the Pittsburgh Pirates, they can afford any player. They could sign Mike Trout if they really wanted. But then how's the team going to look around them? Like, crap, probably, you know what I mean? So it's hard for the Angels. I mean, I think they're putting a pretty decent team out here considering how much they're giving just a small number of guys. But I really like that Simmons move. You're right, man. I think that's going to be a, a big addition this season for him. And if he can do what he did with the Braves offensively that first season with them, then they really got a steal here. But like I said, they gave up a ton for him. And they, re I mean, you look at their minor league system, man, and they don't have much at all. I think this is my least favorite minor league system. Like I said, Gia Vitella at second base, he's, I'm not that high on him, but they do have a second base prospect, Sherman Johnson, but he's kind of an older guy, 25 years old. He, he hit 276, but had a 382 on base with 17 home runs and 26 stolen bases, and they advanced in 2014, but last year just hit, hit 204 with seven home runs and 20 stolen bases at Triple A. So I don't know how great this guy's going to be either, but you might want to give him a, a shot if Giovatella doesn't work out or doesn't at least improve on some of his numbers from last season. There's a couple other guys here. I mean, Caleb Cowart and Chad Henshaw – okay prospects I guess they put up some decent numbers in the minor leagues nothing great though I mean these are just okay guys at best and even the starting pitchers now like I said they got rid of their top prospect in Sean Newcomb and what they have they have a couple okay players Nate Smith is probably the best looking one for this season at least I mean their best prospects are very young now 17 18 19 years old so it's going to be a while before you see very good prospects for the Angels but Nate Smith a 248 ERA in double A and then he got called up to triple A though had a 775 ERA in seven starts he walks too many people uh, he doesn't allow too many hits though he's more of a third or fourth starter at best though in my opinion and then Cal McGowan 24 years old 6'3 200 pounds 
had a 412 career minor league ERA, 438 ERA in 27 starts in double A in 2015. Again, a fourth or fifth starter to me. So the minor league system is weak. I think they have some holes here offensively and possibly in the rotation as well if if a couple of these guys don't work out. And in the bullpen, like I said, it seems kind of thin to me as well besides maybe Houston Street. I mean, if he can stay healthy, he's always a good closer or whatever. But they just seem kind of thin to me. Unlike Mike Trout, he's thick. <laughs> Dude's a beast. So what are you thinking, man? I'm going to slide them up into third here in the AL. Third West. place? Yeah, I'm going to give them third place. Yeah, I don't mind that. Because uh, Cron, dude's all croned out. Pools' his foot's beat. Uh, <laughs> like you were saying, they, these guys, I don't know. Their minor league system's garbage. So Tis. They have to... They have to buy their way to wins now, and we're gonna see how we're gonna see them make it rain. Yeah, I think it's very important they get Pujols back early, and have him produce like he has over the past couple seasons here in LA. I'm gonna say, let me think. You got the A's in fifth place, and then there's Houston, Texas, and Seattle. Mm, I'll say third place with you, man. Why not? Oh yeah. I just don't think they have it to win the division. No, I'd like to see like more since they have Mike Trout, man. I mean, you got the best player in his prime. You want to add to that, you know what I mean? Go out there and try to win while you can. Well, right. They need to get another left fielder to me. I don't trust what they have outside of Trout and Calhoun in, in the outfield. That's the major addition they need, in my opinion. But that's it, man. Third place for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Still a good team, though. I mean, they they always stay in the race. Potential. It's not like they're going to collapse at all. I don't, no, I wouldn't I don't think believe. so. You might see uh, an improvement out of their catcher, too. Carlos Perez, like I said, he's young. Maybe he's better with the pitching staff, and these guys do improve just because uh, uh, the improvements they have with this young guy. You know what I mean? I feel it. I feel you, dog. All right, wrap it up, man. All right, so that's it for the AL West preseason baseball breakdown. This was uh, big, easy. I enjoy it. I enjoy the talk. I enjoy uh, the the division, too. It's going to be a competitive division there, that AL West. We're going to talk to you soon with another breakdown from the AL West. Uh, we only got three teams left. If you want to talk to us, haul at your boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash bet the spread or if you're not listening to us on YouTube, check us out at youtube.com slash bet the spread. You can hit us up at Twitter at bet underscore the spread, and you can hit Jim up personally at bet Jim the win. He will respond to all your baseball questions as he is busy researching for the next segment as we speak. Outside of that, you can find him in the club. <laughs>